Hi everybody, uh, Chris from All Three Words. Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit surprising to be uh, up here, but uh, but I very much welcome the th uh, the opportunity. So thank you very much to everybody in the uh, startup room. Um, I guess uh, it's in in brief. Uh, this is a slightly provocative slide. Um, what we actually do as a company, we've given this uh, photo here, this place on the beach in El Salvador, we've given this a name, uh, Nomad Slumping Survivor, which in itself um, is not that interesting, but what we've actually done is, is named also every other three meter square on the planet, all 57 trillion of them, um, and given them an address too. And why is that relevant here today at Wired Retail? Um, because when somebody, somewhere like this has an address, you can do things with it, which means you can, you can deliver there. And whilst delivering to El Tunco Beach on El Salvador may not be that interesting, if you think about all of the places in the world which do not have an address, uh, which according to various sources is just over half the world, um, that's, that's got a lot of repercussions for this industry, um, where a lot of the time courier delivery, uh, the big barrier to entry is the quality of the addresses and people don't have an address or they've got a very, very poor one which doesn't direct you to anywhere meaningful. So I'm just going to take you a little bit through my, my journey and our journey as a team as, as to how we've got there. So I come from not the retail business, not the tech business, not the geo business, but the music business. And um, this signpost was the bane of my life for the last 10 years um, as we sought to find places not only in the UK but around the world when we did various events um, producing live music. And actually what happens is um, you, you, you run into situations like these because the street addressing system was not envisaged um, for the modern day smartphone user. Um, you have postcodes where there are streets with no street numbers uh, and they just have house names and that's even in this country where a postcode is pretty useful. Um, a lot of the time when we were around the world, uh, there are a lot of countries where the postcode system cannot be used like we use it as an address approximator. Um, and as, as such, it's a well-known fact that addresses are um, of variable quality um, as you go around the world. Um, and as the Universal Postal Union says, only about 50 si or 60 countries out of, let's say, 200 have a postal code or address databases which are kept reasonably current. That's a really low number. Um, and in these developed countries, when you actually verify an address, it basically means that city exists. So this is very much a different, a different life from uh, how it is in the UK. And just to give you an example, if you, if you do e-commerce in Dubai, this is uh, a Google map of Dubai showing you all of, the, all of the streets that they've got names for, which is basically that one on the right. Um, there's a couple of villas with numbers here. But, um, and that, that is the prospect facing a company trying to deliver anything in Dubai, um, that a lot of the areas just don't have an address. And what happens is when you fill in your e-commerce form in Dubai, it says address, you say, actually, my name's Chris, call me. But yes, I'm in Dubai, UAE. And your courier company then has to decipher that. It's a very, very, very different proposition and means that the, the entire courier journey with the customer is incredibly inefficient. Um, this was another place that we found in Oman, my days traveling the music business, where we had to work with addresses like opposite Oman oil p petrol pump, which if you put into a, a search engine does not handle very well. Um, and then there are places where you've actually got the, un, the unmapped as well as the unaddressed. Uh, this is a spot in Rio where um, you can see that the satellite view for that same spot is quite starkly different to the map view. Um, and as a recent article said, even the drug dealers want to get their tennis rackets delivered at home. Um, and th they struggle at the moment. Um, this is the side of a house in, in Ghana, um, and what happens often uh, in the developing world where they uh, build address systems where they haven't really got started is they, they start with a cut half of a town, and then they go, actually, that system wasn't a very good one, we're going to do another one, and they don't get rid of the old one. So they start a new one, and people have two addresses or more, and there are some houses where they've actually got about five, five or six addresses painted on the side. Um, it, it's not a very um, easy way for you as a retailer or an e-commerce uh, person to actually come in and understand what information you want from your, um, from your customer and then how to actually get that to them. So what we tried in our business was uh, saying, right, addresses are difficult. Let's use the only other thing, the most accurate way of talking about it, which is GPS coordinates, which is rooted in the, is the root of all back-end systems. And the, the bottom one there you can see is what they use in the aviation industry, and the top one is probably more used widely in the geo industry. But um, there was one time when I was relaying said 18 digits or 16 digits and two letters to a truck driver in the music business, one digit at a time, on a phone line with a delay, and he got two of the numbers mixed up, and he proceeded to drive an hour in the wrong direction even more and get even more lost than he was to start with. So I figured that these were really, really 
great for computers but not great for human beings. And actually, if GPS coordinates could be made to be good for human beings, we wouldn't bother it with addresses at all um, because we could just talk about things in the most accurate form and, and just not get distracted by addresses. So if you're using digits between 1 and 10, you can specify everywhere in the world with GPS coordinates um, of a sequence of 18 to 16 digits and a couple of letters. And what a few people before us saw is actually if you use alphanumeric characters between 1 and 36, you can squash that into only 10 characters to identify everywhere in the world to a few meters. But what we said, said is if we just take a massive bank of whatever we're going we're gonna to scale um, and took 40,000 words, you actually only need three words to, uh, in a row to be able to uniquely identify every few meters in the world. The compound mass is kind of staggering. Um, so what does this mean in real terms? How, how usable is, are these three words compared to latitude and longitude? Well, in terms of just saying it for a start, um, latitude and longitude doesn't fare too well. It even takes you 12, 12 seconds to actually say what you want to say. But to say finance collars captivates, can you deliver it there? Well, that was a couple of seconds work, which makes it much, much easier to use. Um, and, and as one commentator on Twitter noted, that Walt could have used all three words to avoid having to remember the full coordinates in Breaking Bad. It's a very good point. He could and, uh, and possibly should. Um, but actually, is it, is it easier to remember three words? Well, um, we dug into it. And if you look at how lats long fares on the bottom right, about 0% of the population can remember a 16-digit number. Um, three words does rather better with pretty much everybody being able to remember this. And memory is not, the, it's not the sole goal, but if somebody tells you three words and you want to put it into another device or tell someone to write something down, or read it, it becomes a lot more user-friendly, which is probably the reason why 16 digits of latitude and longitude never really took off for addresses. So uh, we did what we said we were going to do. We built our grid of the world, and we have labeled every uh, each of the 57 trillion 3 meters by 3 meter squares with three words from the dictionary. So this is a spot in London gazed across like. And we have 57 trillion others. Um, and what we figured is, taking my truck driver in Italy, where he got two of the digits the wrong way around, actually, we're going to make a non-sequential grid. Because what, what we don't want is if you're slightly wrong, we want you to know you're wrong. So we've actually labeled all of our adjacent squares very, very differently to each other. So uh, you can see here on the map. Um, so what that means is that table chair lamp is a location in Sydney, Australia. And if you put in table chair lamps, it'll start navigating you to New York. And you're going to say, do you know what? That's not what I meant. And uh, I don't know how many of you have been in this situation where you're trying to use the local address system, but it's kind of tricky. Um, and the, one of the luxuries of what we can do is that we can, uh, or we have named every square in the whole world uh, in three words of the English language, uh, which means it's easier for us to get around, um, even in places where the address systems are really, really difficult. But then we thought, look, yeah, this is an international product. We need to be in, in many languages. So we have made parallel systems in a stack of languages. We've got four listed here. We're actually in eight. And that means that that spot in India has got an, uh, an independent three words, um, depending on which language you're using. So two Swedish guys in India are going to be very, very happy meeting at Riktad Rivit Brahmar. I'm not Swedish. Um, Something else we built into the system, we thought, well, let's make the words nicer for what places where people are more likely to use them. So uh, again, in Swedish, uh, we, we decided to keep the shortest, most memorable Swe Swedish words and stick them in Sweden. And we probably thought we'd have less wandering Swedes in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So if they were, they could make do with slightly longer words. Um, but, it, but it means that wherever people are, they've got a really good experience. Um, so this is what it looks like. This is one of, our, one of our only fans. He's in Melbourne, Australia. He runs an emergency services SMS community, and he's printed off his three words, and that's where he's standing now. And it just means that if, if anyone in here wanted to just drop those three words into a, an app, they could, and that would be a really, really, really efficient way of actually communicating 16 digits plus two letters. Think about it like that. Um, so how big is the tech? It's not one giant Excel database of... 57 trillion rows, uh, latitude and longitude. Um, we've actually done it by an algorithm. It's a formula. It fits in uh, the size of a few floppy disks. It's very, very small, and that can fit on a handset. So we built our 360 solution, which we wanted. We wanted to be able to say it over the phone, send it in an SMS, read it, write it, put in a web link. And, uh, and that's what we did. Um, 
how's it gone down? Um, we've had some really great reception from the geo industry, people who've uh, been working in latitude and longitude for years and thinking that this is one of the most exciting uh, advances in that area, which is fantastic. Um, and what can you do with it? Well, you can have it, for instance, on your Android phone. You can have a little widget on the desktop, which will just uh, on the home screen, where you will just update you all the time if you need to then drop your three words into an app in conversation. If you're then reading them on the phone, want to put them into your website. For instance, if you are doing that e-commerce delivery on the website, you've got your phone for the location. It's very, very simple to transfer between. Um, we're in a variety of mapping apps. Uh, that was an Orden survey one, and we've just been put into a United Nations think brief to say, look, if you're in an emergency situation, there's no addresses, you can use what three words and stick that in the tweet, um, which is a huge accolade for us to be talked about in those circles. Um, and for, for you guys um, in retail, I'm, I'm assuming that you have a hard time with addresses when there's ambiguity. Uh, this is how Google Maps handles Lonsdale Road London. It gives you five options. Um, Zoopla actually gets it better with eight options, but um, th there are many, many uh, ways that addresses can be very ambiguous. They were not built for a smartphone which wants to have one unique answer. So we, we've, uh, we've built our, our system to, to get around ambiguity. So if, you, if I typed in uh, toffee branched pyramid really, really fast into Google, this is what anything not understanding our system would spit out. It's made a pretty good go of it, and it said toffee branches pyramid is probably what you wanted, but actually no, it wasn't what you wanted because that is a location in western China near the Tajikistan border. Our system knows that all these similar ones are actually quite near the user so that you can be much more intelligent and go, this is probably what they wanted. It's 58 kilometers away, and indeed that is the correct answer. Um, so being a 10 megabyte file means that we can be running offline. So if, if you've got a courier company who's communicating with your user, where do you want your package delivered? They don't have to have a mobile data connection. As long as they've got 2G and they can send, a, send an SMS, um, then they can communicate that with you. But they don't need any data to actually get their three words. It is fully offline um, workable. And this is an example of somebody who's actually what three words up uh, the city of uh, Freetown in Sierra Leone. Uh, they've got all these latitude and longitudes, but until now, no one's actually been able to go there and do anything with them. Um, and now they can because they can easily transmit the words. Um, so I guess the question is, is anyone in retail using us uh, in the e-commerce sector? Yes, they are. We've got our first customer. We've got, we've got a lot of customers outside the retail space, but this is our first customer in it, a courier company called Men of VIP in Dubai, who uh, are now managing to navigate this empty space with their three words and telling their customers, this is how we want you to communicate. Now we can plan routes. Now we can get you your stuff on time. Um, and drone delivery. I don't know if anyone here is working on it. Um, you will probably want to know front garden, back garden, not just one single latitude and longitude for that house. Let people specify in three meters. Um, thanks very much. I've got a video I just wanted to quickly play. It's only two minutes. Is, is, is that around? And can someone run it if that's possible? We created What Three Words because addressing around the world just isn't good enough for everyday needs. There are a lot of complex geographical systems that you know can talk about precise location, but it's totally unrealistic for people to walk around with long strings of latitudes and longitudes. We felt there was an opportunity to make something which was precise, yet incredibly simple for everybody to use. The amount of times that you're asking which entrance, which exit, which stadium gate, which car park, there's so many examples of where addressing just doesn't work. So what three words is like a big grid of the world. We've chopped the world up into three meter squares, so we've got 57 trillion three meter squares. And to each of those squares, we've assigned a sequence of three words from the dictionary. So it's as easy as saying table, lamp, spoon, and we've referred to some point in the world somewhere. A three-word address is much more memorable and much more accurate than, for example, a postcode or a street address. We have multiple languages available. We use 25,000 to 40,000 words for our word lists. It can be used with text input or voice input, and we have an inbuilt error detection mechanism. Our algorithm allows us to package it up into just 10 megabytes so it can fit on almost any device to be used offline without a data connection. So simply put, it's really easy to use. We're seeing it integrated in taxi companies, navigation apps, logistics firms. 
travel guides. There are so many ways that being simpler and more precise about location can help all these businesses. Unlike other geographical referencing systems, which are basically designed for technical use, the beauty of what three words is designed for ordinary people to use. It only takes a few seconds to understand how it works, and then anyone can communicate using the three words. Another big advantage of what three words is that it covers the whole of the globe, and that's why I was really intrigued when I first saw what three words, because it was the first truly original system that I'd come across in my career. So now, everywhere has an address. It's the most beautiful places, the most fun places, the most critical, vital places. I mean, that's the beauty of it. Literally everywhere in the world now has a simple address. Thanks very much.